Welcome back to another video. In the last video, we left it like this, where we've got a pet that follows us around and it's got a slight wobble to it whenever it moves. And whenever it's not moving, there is no wobble. But uh, there is a problem with this. If Assuming that you want your pets to be able to be seen by other players, if you're making a multiplayer game. If we click this button that says current client, uh, which is to the left of the stop button, that'll give us the server view and the server is not showing a pet at all that's because we're only doing this on the client side so only we can see our pet but we want others to be able to see our pet because more than likely you're going to be making a multiplayer game and there's going to be multiple players and yeah you want to show off your pets you want other people to see your pets so that is what we're going to be doing today in this video so that will look like this. It's a little bit more jittery. Uh, we need to tweak the settings for the wobble as he just looks like he's spazzing a little bit. But we did get it working and that's what we're gonna be doing today. If we click the server, you can see that the pet is behind our player. The server can see the pet. And so yeah, that's what we are going for today. So let's just get started. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to our replicated storage and we need to add in a folder. I'm going to call this remote events with no space. And we're going to add in a remote event into that folder. And the name of this event is going to be equip pet event. Then we need to go to our server script service and we want to add in a script just a regular server script and we're going to call this pet system server script get, get rid of this first line and so yeah we're going to actually it's going to look very similar to this script but rather than just copying and pasting stuff and risking a huge mess, uh, we're just gonna ignore this script for now. And we're just going to start writing the server script the way it should be. So we want to get our replicated storage. So local replicated storage equals game colon get service replicated storage need to grab that pets folder actually not yet we will grab that in a second though uh, let's grab the run service and then now we will grab that pets folder And we will grab the equip pet event. Then we need some variables for the pet to follow us and positioning the pet, as well as variables for the wobble. So we'll say follow distance equals five local height off height offset geez I can't type today equals geez equals minus two uh, we are going to be lerping the pest position to make it a little bit smoother so we need a lerp speed variable and I like 0 0.05 uh, the lower you make this the smoother it'll be but also the slower it'll be so yeah just play with this to get the results that you want and we need some stuff for the wobble so local wobble amplitude equals math dot radians five and the bigger this number is the more of a wobble the more uh, dramatic the wobble will be and I'm sorry that we're retyping a lot of this stuff. I should have just did this from the get-go, but you know, 
I didn't. So now here we are. Equals five. Wobble speed equals five. So yeah, you can adjust this to make it wobble faster. And then the move threshold, which similar to the last one is uh, the minimal movement required to trigger the wobble. And we want a table to hold the pets by the player. Just an empty table. And then we can start writing our function for equipping the pet. And we'll pass through the player. Oops. Ignore, ignore the curly brackets. That's just a habit from working in Unity. And when we equip a pet, we want to, for now at least, remove uh, any existing pet for the player. Alright, then we want to find the player's character in the humanoid part, humanoid root part. Then we want to clone the pet model from replicated storage and parent it to the workspace. And I'm just doing dog. But let me actually see, is there a duck? Why have I not, why did I not do a duck if they got one? They do not, so we will be sticking with the dog. Then we're going to add in a check to ensure that the pet model exists and that it has a primary part. So we just say if not pet model, then warn pet model not found and do a return. So if there is no pet model found, we're just going to return and not run any of the rest of the code. So we need to uh, we need to parent the pet model to the workspace. So pet model dot parent equals workspace, and we want to set the owner of the pet model to be uh, the player that we pass in. So we will say pet model set attribute owner player dot user ID. Then we want to store the pet in the in that empty table that we have. So we just say pets square brackets player equals pet model. Then we want some variables to manage the movement of the pet and the wobble of the pet. So we say local last pet position equals pet model dot primary part dot position and local time equals zero. And then we need to create a loop uh, which will let the pet follow the player. So to do that, we need to make one more variable, local run connection, then run connection equals run service dot stepped. And then we want to connect a function that will pass through delta time go in between these two parentheses press enter and now we're inside of our loop and we need an if statement at the beginning that will disconnect the loop if the pet or the player is missing so we say if not pets player or not character 
or not humanoid root part or not pet model dot primary part then and inside of that we will say if run connection then run connection colon disconnect and again that is a disconnect the loop if the pet or the player is missing and then outside of the first end do a return that way it won't proceed to run the rest of the loop so we're done with that if statement but we still want to be inside the loop so we got a lot more to write inside of this loop so outside of that end uh, we want to calculate the target position behind the player so we will say local target position equals humanoid root part dot position minus humanoid root part dot c frame dot look vector times follow distance then we want to grab or then we want to create a final position equals vector three dot new and it needs a target position dot capital X humanoid root part dot position dot capital Y plus height offset comma target position capital Z Now we want to get the current pets position. So local current position equals pet model dot primary part dot position. And we want to alert between the current position and the final target position. So we'll say local alert pos position equals current position colon lerp final position comma lerp speed so this will take the current position and lerp to the final position and it we pass in the lerp speed that we set at the top of the script again to lower the value the smoother it will be but also the slower it will be then we want to calculate the distance the pet has moved since the last frame. So we got to say local distance to target equals lurch position minus last pet position. And then outside of that do dot magnitude. Then we need some code for the wobble effect. So local wobble rotation equals c frame dot angles zero comma zero comma zero so again no wobble by default but we will be adding in the wobble with an if statement and we only want to wobble if the distance to target is greater than the move threshold and we say time plus equals delta time and then we actually apply the wobble effect uh, whenever it's moving so local wobble offset equals math dot sign and we pass through time dot wobble speed and then we multiply that by wobble amplitude and it's these kinds of lines it doesn't really have to make too much sense it's just like math heavy stuff I don't really understand it well enough to explain it so I'm just I'm just writing stuff like this and I just just copy it um, you don't have to 
really understand it. This is just from experience and uh, Googling stuff. And yeah, so sorry I can't explain this better, but wobble rotation equals C frame dot angles. And we pass through zero comma zero and then we want to do the wobble offset on the Z axis because that is where we are actually rotating uh, the PEF to create a wobble. We're rotating it on the Z axis. All right, outside of that, we need to calculate the Y axis rotation so it will face the player. So we will say local look at position equals vector three dot new humanoid root part position uh, x comma pet model dot primary part dot position dot y then humanoid root part dot position dot z We need a local pet look at player equals C frame dot look at. And we pass through the pet model dot primary part dot position comma look at position. And we want to extract only the y-axis rotation, which is the yaw. And to do that, we will say local underscore comma yaw comma underscore equals pet look at player parentheses to orientation. So this, this lets us grab just the y-axis rotation. And then we can just say local y rotation equals C frame dot angles. And then we just do zero, y'all, zero. And then we want to apply a smooth position, the y-axis rotation a 180 degrees rotation and a wobble. Now the reason we got to do 180 degrees rotation is because everything was working, but my pet was facing the opposite direction. So a simple fix for that is just to rotate it 100 degree, 180 degrees, which is what we're going to do. So we to do all of that, we can do it all in one line. We can just say pet model set primary set primary part C frame and we pass through C frame dot new and we pass through that a lerped position and we multiply it by the Y rotation multiply that by C frame dot angles zero math dot radians 180 comma zero and then multiply that by wobble rotation Then last but not least for this function we just got to update the last known pet position for the next frame so last pet position equals lerped position. And that looks wonderful. So now we just want to listen for when the player requests the equip pet event. So we just say pet equip, oops, pet, e or it's equip pet event. Dot on server event colon connect equip pet 
Great, so that should be our server script. Now let's go back to our uh, client script and we're just gonna just we're just gonna delete everything and because this one will not be very long now so we just say uh, the top local replicated storage equals game colon get service replicated storage and then local players equals game get service players and we need to grab the user input service need to grab the local player and we need to grab that equip pet event that is in our replicated storage and it's also in a remote events folder then we just need a function to uh, request equipping uh, of the pet from the server so local function equip pet and then equip pet event fire server and then we just need to hook this up to our user input service uh, input began and we just need to connect a function that will pass through input and inside of that all we got to say is if input dot key code equals enum dot key code dot e then we want to equip the pet just call that function and I believe that should be everything. Let's cross our fingers and hit play. Let's press the E key. And there's our pet and he's following us around. And yeah, it's working. It's working the way we want it to. It looks pretty much the same as when we started, but now if we click this current client and go to the server's view, oh, uh, there is our pet and he's following us around. And yeah, everything is working so we did a lot uh just to have it look like it did pretty much before but at least now we can see it on the server if we're playing a multiplayer game other players will be able to see our pet and we will be able to see other players pets so we are very happy with this and we will continue this series i don't know what we'll do next but uh, we'll do something we'll make it better uh, not sure how far I want to go with this, but yeah, we're happy with it right now. And thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.